Good evening. Uh, today's Mass is uh, celebrated uh, for the intention of uh, Myrna, uh, of my, uh, the nickname, it is um, um, Myrna, right? Yeah, it's Myrna. Oh, okay, I thought because Cindy threw a little cross there. So. But it is for Myrna, so do remember Myrna in your uh, prayers today, if you will. Also, uh, we are celebrating the feast day of St. Barnabas, uh, Apostle of the Church. Let me change the book over here real quick. We'll begin with the entrance antiphon. Blessed is this holy man who was worthy to be numbered among the apostles, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who decreed that St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations, grant that the gospel of Christ, which is strenuously preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and by deed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number who believed to turn to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all, by, uh, all to remain faithful to uh, the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith, and a large number of people were added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarshish to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, uh, Simeon, who was uh, called Niger, Lucius, of a Cyrene, Manius, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the, the Holy Spirit came, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. They completed their fasting and prayer. They laid hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord is revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness towards the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into songs, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing praise the Lord with the harp, with the harp and a melodious song with the trumpets then, with the sound of horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Rahwa, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge. The judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you pay the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, what we see in today's uh, feast that we're celebrating, St. Barnabas, we see uh, the church uh, continuing to uh, have authority beyond Jesus Christ. If you look at the uh, first 12 apostles, you will not see Barnabas' name there. You won't see Paul's name there. Why? Because they came afterwards. They were uh, made apostles. In other words, they were made bishops with the idea that the, the authority of Jesus Christ, which was given over to St. Peter, which was given to the apostles, were to be passed on to generation to generation. And of course, this is why we do look at uh, Bishop Donald, our new bishop, and, and look at him with great respect and, and reverence from Bishop Paul, Paul Swain. They have been given a very special authority, a special power given to them by the Holy Spirit to continue in the 21st century to bring Christ to the world. And as what we see in today's uh, uh, first reading from St. Uh, from the Acts of the Apostles, that mandate to go and preach the word and, and not to be afraid to go out into the world and go change it in your own little way. And we also see in today's uh, gospel as well, uh, one of the parts of our faith that are so essential, and it is something that we, uh, we have a separation from our separated brothers and sisters of other faiths. And that, of course, is this concept of purgatory. A lot of uh, uh, people, Christians of other faiths, uh, uh, have a real difficulty with purgatory. Why? I really don't know, to tell you the truth, because it is scripturally referred to. We have it in today's gospel, for instance, where, where Jesus reminds uh, all of us that, that when it comes to bringing uh, ourselves before God, that when we get to that moment in our lives, that we have to make sure that we are, we're good with God, we, we're, we're right with God. And as it says so clearly, if we find ourselves in, in, a, in, a, in a way that uh, uh, we are not right, right with, the, with our brothers and sisters, that we have to go and get reconciled. And if we don't get reconciled, amen, I, I say to you, otherwise your opponent will hand you over to the judge, the Jan judge will hand you over to the guard, and you'll be thrown into prison. And it doesn't uh, end there where, okay, and then you are going to lose hope. But no, you will be released you will not be released until you pay the last penny. In other words, you are going to find yourself in this, this pr prison of purgation. And of course, the only way that can be released uh, when you are found in, uh, in the poorhouse at that time is that you have to rely on your brothers and sisters, on their charity to bail you out, to, to be able to pay the fines. And, and that's what we do today with the poor souls of purgatory, why we hold so clearly of the role of, of what we do as church, uh, church pilgrim, this church on earth, that we are able to take the opportunity in our lives to do those things of charity and sacrifice is what we see in the first reading today in, in terms of uh, uh, going into fasting and, and doing things, not for our sake, but to make ourselves uncomfortable for the sake of those that are in purgatory. 
So uh, we need to be able to preach, preach the gospel and not to be afraid to preach it 24 hours a day. And as we said in the opening prayer, as we were honoring St. Barnabas, and sometimes even use words. It isn't just what we say, but it is what we do as Christians that is so important to be a witness to a world that are looking for true Christians, the followers of Jesus Christ in a world, especially with the pandemic and the rioting, so desperately need to find that hope and our surety in Christ. So let us now stand uh, in, in one body and pray to uh, God and through the intercession of St. Barnabas and all the saints to hear us as we call before God our Father, uh, our petitions and our thanksgiving. So, Heavenly Father, on this feast day of St. Barnabas, we do remember the leaders of the church. We remember Pope Francis, the successor of, of, uh, of uh, Peter. We also remember uh, Bishop Donald, who is, as we see in today's Acts, the apostles, the successor of St. Paul and St. Barnabas. Heavenly Father, for all those who, who have given you, given the authority to guide our church, may they be, give out, be open to the the gifts of the Holy Spirit as they bring about your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Now we present you, Heavenly Father, at this time as well, those that are, are in positions of a civil authority as well. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit to be with them too during this uh, pandemic and all the angst that is going in our world. Bless them and and give them the, the strength to be able to protect the common good according to your will and to serve it well. We pray to the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we also remember all those that are affected by the coronavirus. Uh, we're remembering Father Paul and uh, also those uh, in our community that are finding anxiety because of, of this difficulty of the pandemic. Heavenly Father, bring your Holy Spirit as you brought uh, to, the whole, to the apostles in the upper room, bring that peace that is from heaven. And we may come through this and, uh, with, with a sense of, of uh, faith in you and being able to know that in you all things are possible. All things can be set aside because we live for the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, we also want to remember all those who are suffering because of other illnesses as well as we're remembering Myrna today and for all those in the hospital and the nursing homes, those who are homebound. Heavenly Father, be with them at this time to bring them healing quickly. They may return to your altar of praise with us soon. We pray to the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, we present to all those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith. Today, we celebrated the funeral of uh, Willard Wilbin uh, in uh, Westington Springs. But for all of our faithful, we now present them to you as, uh, in, in that act of love, that act of charity. That they may share eternal life with you in heaven, that promise of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Now we turn to God with those petitions that are hope we hold dearest to our hearts and present them to God at this time. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we are a people that realize that it is that your church is greater than what is just confined within the walls of a building. Rather, the church extends up throughout our entire community, now coming before you with these petitions that we've just spoken, and those that we hold in our hearts, we present them to you at this time through our, to our mediator, Jesus Christ, our eldest brother, we know lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, as one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify with your blessings, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here, so that they, by your grace, they may set us on fire. The flame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty eternal God, for you, eternal shepherd, did not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the bond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to let us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partake of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit your co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And again, if you turn to your living uh, with Christ and your word among us, let us say together the communion antiphon as we honor St. Barnabas today. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. I forgot to bring the tabernacle keys on.
And again, in your charity today, do remember to pray for Myrna Kanigni for when we offer this Mass. Let us pray as we receive the pledge of eternal life. We humbly implore you, Lord, that what we celebrate in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold, un, uh, uh, we, we may behold one day unveiled through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Well, now that uh, Easter is over, I try to emphasize this. Uh, it's uh, often uh, not preached uh, much anymore, but uh, uh, those of the uh, olden days will remember uh, Fridays were day of fasting. They have not passing, absence, abstaining. So now that we are back in ordinary time, uh, do remember the there's still requirements still there. Churches never change the requirement of abstinence. So, uh, uh, but they would, one thing that was changed is you don't have to give up just meat alone. Uh, you can give up something, as we heard in today's uh, first reading, where there is uh, some kind of sacrifice, remembering what Jesus did on the uh, cross for us on Good Friday. So uh, do remember that pick something, uh, uh, maybe it is uh, adding something to your spiritual life or what I do because it's just uh, I don't like fish. Uh, I do eat fish as, a, as an alternative uh, to my meat. Uh, so whatever it might be, but do remember the requirements are still there of the church. We are supposed to give up something. There should be some kind of abstinence of, of remembering what your, your Jesus did on the cross for us uh, uh, on that Good Friday. So still in place, remember tomorrow, pick something, and for that continues all the way through every single Friday of the, of the year. It's not supposed to be just a select time. Every single Friday is supposed to be a day of absence. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.